Hello everyone, I got another one of these Auto World patinas and I got this one because this looks pretty bad with normal paint schemes because this gap is so bad but as a beat up truck yeah, I think hopefully it'll be a little bit better so it says one of 3600 this is a 65 Chevy Suburban it's a Miho exclusive and uh, yeah sadly they don't, they don't really promote the other models Maybe because it's a Miho thing. Alright, part of the Patina series. So these are decals, apparently, or some sort of hydrographic, I don't know, it's some sort of layer of printing that's actually stuck to a regular die-cast model. Uh, the Chevy Suburban dates back to 1935. It's actually the longest-running uh, nameplate in automotive history. It's still made today. This would be the fifth generation, which uh, spanned between 1960 to 1966. But if you lived in Brazil, you could actually get this up until 1989. So that's pretty wacky. Uh, let's see, it could have been powered by an inline six of 3.8 liters up to a 5.8, 5.4 liter V8. You know, it's weird. I, I think I'm dyslexic. I see what, I say things are different from what I, I'm reading. Ah, yeah, boy. All right, this model introduced a factory-equipped four-wheel drive option for the first time. And uh, I guess that's all I learned about this guy. Let's see if this thing fits. Yeah, all right, so you can store this later on. I will keep this for my travels. Get this back to Asia safely. Okay. So, obviously it's customized. It's got aftermarket rims. But it's a beater, so it's an interesting mix. <coughs> okay, different blacked out grill. I gotta say, the grill looks too clean. Oh well. This is an interesting set of wheels on this one. It's still very nice looking. I like the mold though. It's pretty good. Well, yeah, not bad. It matches up pretty well, I think. Now I got some beater photos. That's got a nice patina. But that's uh, probably a four-wheel drive one. And then this is definitely a beat-up one. Let's see if I can... Yeah, it's got pretty small taillights for such a big rear end there. Hmm. All right. So, yeah, it's a decal, or something, because see, I'm, I'm literally pushing it into the grooves here. So, I don't know if this is going to be a problem in the future. You know, I have some old die casts and the decals either are peeled off, like, or they're cracking. So, I don't know. I don't know if this is a good idea. Oh, well. These wheels are quite sparkly, very shiny. I don't know what kind of wheels these are. If anyone knows, please leave a note. It looks like there's actually a disc brake back there. Might be hard to tell, but I can see like a round shape in the uh, spoke hole opening. So that's kind of neat. I like it. I don't know if it's a separate piece. No, I think it's just cast it into that wheel. All right, uh, let's see what kind of badge this is. It's a 10. And a Chevy bow tie. Okay. I guess I'm gonna. I guess that's on Suburbans, but see, look at the end. Yep, air pocket. Not nice. And then a whole bunch of, bunch of wrinkliness here. So these are some rushed decals. You know, you don't. <sighs> these are probably the worst decals I've seen in 164, but these are also probably the cheapest models I've seen with decals. Well, yeah, these are cheaper than Sparky's, definitely cheaper than Inno, definitely cheaper than Tarmac Works Hobbies. So I guess it makes sense that they would just slap these on and they're not very pretty to look at. But again, if this is a old beater, I'm just imagining this was in a car crash and those are just wrinkles in the steel now. So it doesn't bother me too, too much. All right, the door handle sticking out there. Unfortunately, a bunch more wrinkles there. And then I think this original Suburban was this color here, which is like 
a gray of some sort. And, and then the, most of it's covered in the, the decal work. One thing that uh, seems better than my first C10 one is the graphics don't look as pixelated. They look smoother in their transitions. The, the other one was just really pixelated. So in fact, I have it right here. Let's see. So here's the C10. Look how, look how pixelated that C10 is. Look how smooth the graphic has changed. It's like, <laughs> this is almost like a dot matrix. It's so rough. It's kind of ridiculous. I'm, I'm surprised they even put this out. You know, a, a printer from 30 years ago would probably print nicer than this. I don't know, I'm just exaggerating now. But this is much better. Although, yeah, yeah, all right, it's good. It's better. It's an improvement, I suppose. Okay, mm let's go around to the front. Just the stark white circles there. Auto World, please. Get some sort of printing. Print a graphic on there. You know, print some lines on there. Nice texture here. But again, it's, it's kind of weird. This is all so clean. But the bumper is so messy. This is all messy. But this is so clean. Right, so it would have been nice if they... Splatter, <laughs> splattered like a paint wash or something in there, like a brown paint wash maybe. Okay, well these vents have black in there and some turn signals, uh, yellow I guess. And then uh, this bumper is casted in, or is it a separate piece? I think it's casted in, but see the decal thing. Yeah, wrap that in there. Wow. So yeah, look at this. Man, that is just an atrocious panel cap. That's got to be like 1.5 millimeters, maybe two. So if you multiplied two millimeters by 64, you're talking like a four inch panel gap. And uh, <laughs> that's, that just never happens. In, unless, I mean, wow, it's not even straight too, it's crooked. Not there, nope. Well, like, like I said, it's a beater. So this thing got into several accidents over its time, went to several dodgy repair shops. And that's why this hood is crooked in many ways, because the dodgy repairs. But yeah, this would anger me if uh, this was like a nice paint finish, like a pretty one, like those first two photographs I pulled up, because, you know, this is this is a disaster. Like, why would you... Auto World, don't even bother. You can't even see the engine. It, things just... doesn't open. By design, even if it could open a lot, you're not going to see much of it because it's such a tall hood. So, it would have been nicer if they just had plastic headlights. Okay, some ridges there look nice. The wiper blades, I do feel like the blades could have been molded longer. So they look like they would actually sweep more of it. Pretty clear window right there, so that's nice. And it's curved too. Uh, some sort of ridge there on this side. Yeah, just more wrinkliness. So this is what I'm afraid of right here. Will this all start to get worse and peel off more? Hmm. I don't know. And then, see the original paint there? And then you just have this rectangle of weird dirtiness. It's kind of weird. Uh, I don't know why they would have made a black border. Why wouldn't they just leave it? Like, just this dirtiness and it just wraps around but adding the black border around it makes it look like a graphic on purpose instead of it being like a dirty color uh, so the execution could have been better I think but again the price of this is pretty low all right going to the rear nice dirty bumper again so I think that's pretty nice and it's not just one color it's actually brown and black so that's cool let's cast it in Unfortunately, yeah, look at all the air pockets around these hinges. It's uh, pretty bad. And then this thing here, yeah, those are some horrible details. I have to, when I get back to home, I'm going to go over with this with the decal softener and just try to work out all the bubbles. Okay, so I'm going to guess this red might be part of the decal work, but it seems small. Pockets galore. Hmm. Nothing on the license plate. Some black around here and around the windows. 
I do like the interior. It's not a nice light tan, so you don't need a flashlight. Some all the details on the dashboard there, although not the instruments. And then the rear seats, well, unfortunately that's like tinted glass. So, hmm, the seats are pretty flat. There's no ribbing, which is kind of a bit dull. There's a big post there in the back, just holding that rivet there. But it's hidden pretty well because of double doors back there. Oh boy, this is really uh, unsightly. It's like <laughs> all these all these little air bubbles. It's, I just don't like seeing them. So I don't know if this is a sticker or a decal or what. You know, I think it just literally tore it right there. But since this is a beater truck, I guess I don't care. Hmm. Okay. Nice tire treads, they look pretty nice. And then uh, unfortunately they don't tell you this is a Chevy Suburban. They just tell you who made it and some where it was made and when it was made. Whatever, cast it in details. Okay, well. Let's see what other vehicles we can compare it to. I guess we'll just pull up that C10. One thing that's worse about this is the bed of this C10 is like, it's like a brand new truck, you know, it's just a brand new glossy orange bed, but then the rest of it's supposed to be weathered, and then you have glossy orange showing through here. So the execution of this is a lot worse, I think, than this Suburban. Even though this has a lot more air pockets, at least the, most of it from this distance looks like a beat up truck, except for the wheels, of course. So, I'm actually liking this more than this, even though this has so many weird pockets going about. Alright, Johnny Lightning, we've got this Scout 2, which is a pretty good one. And then uh, M2 Machines, we've got this old classic Bronco. Bronco. Okay, so we got some classic trucks building up here in my collection. Let's get the spin thing. And we'll spin it in front of the old photos. Alright, only I'll have to wait till October to see if my decal softener will actually get rid of more of those bubbles. Hmm. It's better than the first this earlier one, that's for sure, this thing. I just don't know. What do you guys think about this whole decal wrapping thing, you know, because I have a suspicion, like other things that are wrapped, eventually the adhesive works it works loose, or the adhesive maybe hardens or something like that, you know, just like wallpaper on a wall, eventually it starts to peel off. So in like 10, 20 years, is this going to look like this, or is it just going to be a bunch of bubbles or crack, crack stuff? So we'll, we'll have to see. Ideally, it would all be tampoed and weathered properly, <coughs> but I, I just don't think they can do it for the cost of an auto world. If uh, you know a premium brand were to try to tackle this sort of stuff, they need to look at action figures. There's a brand of action figures called 3A, and they have these robots that are weathered very well. There's like multiple layers of paint, at least on the early releases. I think they're using the salt chipping method. <laughs> And I, I think I have a video of actually salt chipping method on one of my robots. Uh, so you might want to look that up if you want to feel like customizing some cars with uh, some salt and hairspray. Alright, well, appreciate you guys checking this out. And I'll see you the next time we do an auto world. Bye.